Happy Sabbath, friends. Happy, Happy Sabbath, everyone. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, wow, we're on chapter 38. Can you believe it? We want to thank God for guiding us so far. Before we begin, I'm going to ask Uncle Lee to give us a word of prayer. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us yes, yet another chance to discuss your word. May you please be with us this afternoon as we will open scriptures. Allow us to share things that are going to come from you. May you be with those who are going to watch this video. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, so the topic this week is quite interesting. Yeah. Um, we have it here. <laughs> chapter 38 of the book, The Great Controversy. And the topic is the final warning. And then mm. out of love, we have put the prepare. Um, but the topic is the final warning. Final warning yeah. mm -hmm. And so it begins with, by quoting Revelations chapter 18. Um, which is where we have the falling of the latter rain. And so it talks of how we have had the three angels' message being preached. The first angel's message starts in the summer of 1844, and it continues. Then we have the climax now being reached with the proclamation of the third angel's message. Mm. And so this is what this chapter is about it details the struggles that the children of god will have to go through um as they share the word of god their faith um the unity that will then exist between church and state and sadly also the protestant church joining the movement and then it also highlights that a death sentence will actually be passed for the children of god because of the work that they'll have chosen to do and chosen to remain faithful to the commandments of God. And thankfully it does not end there because we are told that in the end, God interposes for his people. And so even though they seem overwhelmed and they think, is this work necessary? Should I be doing this? They remember who has instructed them to do the work and they run back to him when they are overwhelmed and he is their comfort. The rest of the details you'll get into, but we need to know that um this is the final warning so it's a warning that goes out to the people living in the last days and i think this chapter really just details the love of god for me because he presents the truth to people and he says you know what even though you've rejected me for the past i don't know how many years now we know it's been about 177 um it's okay I still want to give you another chance to choose me. And so he makes it so clear and so plain for everyone to choose. And so, without further ado, let's get right into it. Mm. Um, the first I one have I the first one. Yeah. Uh, okay. It says, okay, so, um, but God still has a people. So it's talking about Babylon, right? Um, I think it would make sense if I first um, read Revelations chapter 18, verse 1, 2, and 4. It says, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with the glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, mm. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons. A prison for every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hated bird. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you um, share in her sins, and lest you receive her plagues. Mm -hmm. So remember, when we spoke of Babylon, we indicated from the Bible that Babylon um, represents the fallen church, which is the papacy and her daughters. So Babylon is the impurity that now exists. And when Babylon has fallen, it's when she fully establishes a Sunday law that goes contrary to the word of God. This is when the fall um, is completed. It happens gradually, yes, but then it, the fall reaches the zenith um, with the ushering in of the Sparia Sabbath. Okay, so this is when now it's saying that, so it's spoken and then they're saying of Babylon, it is brought into view of the prophecy and it is declared that have seen, has since they've reached heaven. But God still has a people in Babylon. And before the visitation of his judgments, 
these faithful ones must be called out that they partake not of her sins and not receive her plague. Hence, the movement symbolized by the angel coming down from heaven, lightening the earth with his glory and crying mightily with a strong voice, announcing the sins of Babylon. The loud cry um, is heard, come out of her, my people. These announcements uniting the third angel's message constitute the final warning to be given to the inhabitants of the earth. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that, you know, God says other sheep, do I still have that are not yet in this fold? Mm -hmm. And so the Lord is saying that regardless of what's going on, I have more children who are yet to join the fold. And these are precious in my sight. So I will give them a chance to say, come out of her. Uh, so our second court says, but not one is made to suffer the wrath of God until the truth has been brought home to his mind and conscience mm -hmm. and has been rejected. There are many who have never had an opportunity to hear the special truths for this time. The obligation of the fourth command, commandment has never been set before them in its true light. He who reads every heart and tries every motive will leave none who desire a knowledge of the truth to be deceived as to the issues of the controversy. The decree is not to be urged upon the people blindly. Everyone is to have sufficient light to make his decision intelligently. Uh, so what the quotation is saying is, you know, when you are trying to preach to other people, when you are trying to share the word, sometimes you feel like, ah, um, as long as I have told someone, then the Lord is going to judge them on what I have told them. But here it's telling us the character of God, that God will judge people when considering that they have actually understood what he was. So God, through his word, through his messengers, he'll make sure that all of us, we have understood what the fourth commandment means how we are supposed to keep it. And that's how we are going to judge. So I was talking about when we are sharing the word of God, sometimes we just look at others and feel like, ah, no, you know what? These are not really coming up to what we are telling them and they are going to be judged. It is not our duty um, to try and pass judgment or not to be patient with others. And at the same time, when you don't really understand, you know, you have been taught 20, 30 years ever since you were born that the day you're supposed to keep is the Sunday. And you now don't understand why God has to judge you overnight over this thing that you have just heard, maybe from this video. God will make sure that you actually understand. And like what we are saying, this is a final warning. Um, there's, a, there's a phrase that Mara mentioned, which is found in Revelation, which says, Come out of here, my people. Um, each and every day, ask yourself, how am I supposed to come out of Babylon? What am I doing in Babylon? What are the characteristics of Babylon? And from that, you actually learn more truths and understand if it is your will really to, under, to obey God in truth, you actually review more. So, uh, the mistake that most of us make is we are so comfortable with the way we have been doing things and we don't want to hear anything new. Yes, we love God. But now we feel like if we are to search for new truths, maybe they will prohibit us from some pleasures and stuff. That is the devil who is always whispering that. Let's search for the truth. Let's ask God. Loving God is so simple. He actually help. He is actually ready to help us to do the right things. Um, so that's what I just wanted to highlight, baby. You can go to your Thank second you, quote. Thus the message of the third angel will be proclaimed. As the time comes for it to be given with greatest power, the Lord will work through humble instruments, leading the minds of those who consecrate themselves to his service. The laborers will be qualified rather than the action of the Holy Spirit than by the training of institutions. Men of prayer and faith will be constrained to go forth with holy zeal, declaring the words God gives them. Um, you know, it's quite interesting that we look up 
usually to people who have i think the world i don't know if it's bad or good whatever the case may be we've been trained to think that literally qualifications equal the presence of the holy spirit in one's life and because in our academic fields that is the case we've also brought this into the church while i have i have nothing against um people who are well educated i think that's excellent even having ministers who are well educated um however i think that we should ask god as well to say amongst those that are educated give us the spirit of discernment to know which ones teach the truth mm. because some will be educated and bring about certain um questions which tend to undermine our faith mm. and this is not the path that god wants us to take and so god actually says that in the last days he is going to use humble ordinary people who have been taught not in the schools of rabbis but in the school of christ we are told remember when we read we learned that john the baptist did not go to any rabbinical school the reason was that god did not want him to be polluted by the teachers i found that to be quite interesting jesus himself did not go to these schools he learned at the feet of his mother about god this should tell us something. It is important for us to understand that while acquiring education is fantastic, it does not equate to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in the last days, it is going to be simple people who say, Lord, teach me your ways, who are going to be willing to spread the same message. Mm, thank you, baby. Um, the next quotation says, Conscientious obedience to the word of God will be treated as rebellion. Blinded by Satan, the parent who exercise harshness and severity toward the believing child. Mm. The master or mistress will oppress the commandment keeping servant. Affection will be alienated. Children will be disinherited and driven from home. The words of Paul, which will be literally, literally fulfilled, all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Mm. What's being said here is, as we near the final ends, some of the some of the children will actually realize no, what I've been taught by my parents is actually false. Or at work, uh, your boss, wherever we are, our relations, they will be they will be affected with these things. So it is not something that you we are supposed to take lightly. We have to make decisions based on what God has taught us, based on what God says, not on what family thinks or on what the church or friends think if anyone is going against the word of god or if they are actually pulling us down we should actually make the stand to say we want to follow what god says mm -hmm. and that's where persecution starts you know persecution is not only about uh being cut off your head or being beaten when you are being given pocket money as a child and your parent will say, if you continue to do things this way, if you are not going to keep this Sunday, then I'm not going to give you your pocket money. That's persecution. Uh, or if your boss says, if you don't follow what I want, then I'm going to cut um, your salary or you are no longer going to be an employee here. Those are some of the things that we should prepare for. You know, there are some things that are actually even happening right now where you can see the potential that people has in persecuting others based on how they feel or how they see other things. So, you know, um, so you, you should actually know that when this time comes, we have God to on our side. And it's something that we have been told uh, way before that we should ex expect and when we see these things happening, we should know that the end is near and our salvation uh, is at the door. May the Lord bless us um, as we continue with the discussion as well. Hey, thank you, sweetie. As the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message, but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth, abandon their position and join the ranks of opposition. By uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, they have come to view matters in nearly the same light. And when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy, popular side. Men of talent and pleasing address, who once rejoiced in the truth, employed their powers to deceive and mislead souls. 
they've become the most bitter enemies of the former brethren. When Sabbath keepers are brought before the courts to answer for their faith, these apostates are more efficient agents of Satan to misrepresent and accuse them and by false reports and insinuations to steer the rulers against them. This is such a sad sight that is represented. But our brothers and sisters who have not allowed the sanctifying power of truth to work in them will leave the ranks, not because they don't know that the mark of the beast is um, Sunday worship, once of course we are tested to worship on Sabbath, not because they don't know what God desires of us, but because in their lives they did not allow their lives to be transformed mm. daily. So it's not, it goes deeper. You know, I don't know if this is, at school it's just about, you know this, okay, reproduce it in the exam, based on what you learned, now apply it in work. But it's not supposed to have a transformative effect in your life per se, for you to succeed in your character and in your career, sorry. Um, but when it gets to have anything, you can't just know. Mm. A form of godliness which denies the power thereof is not enough. Mm. And so it's such a sad, sad thought that, you know, Ellen White um, refers to them as bench warmers, that we have bench warmers or placeholders that are just holding the place for the other sheep that God is going to call in the final morning. You know, my brothers and sisters, we thank God that there's enough room for all of us. If we decide, even though we are Adventists, God has not said, Mara, you are going to be a bench warmer. We just know that there are some. But foreknowledge, God's foreknowledge is not his predestination. Mm. He has not predestined you to be the one that is to get lost. He knows there are some that are going to choose to get lost. But at the same um, that was there with the ark, there was enough room for everyone, had everyone believed. But God knew that mm. others were going to just choose not to believe. So let us not be overwhelmed. It's not too late. We can begin today to say, Lord, allow um, the Spirit to sanctify my life and change me and not be found wanting in this day. And I think it's going to be painful for the brothers and sisters who are going to be betrayed. Imagine liberty standing in court to testify against me. You know, you think, oh, we're working together. We're working for God. People you've sung with. People you've preached with, I, I don't anticipate that time. I desire that all of us be able to be on the faithful side and strengthen each other. Mm. Yeah. Mm, okay, so the next quote says, The Lord gives a special truth for the people in an emergency. Who dare refuse to publish it? Mm. I think as a world, um, some Three weeks ago, is it two weeks ago, there was this COP26 and stuff where leaders would actually come together to say, you know what, we can no longer just sit and watch. There's an emergence. The world mm -hmm. is not, is no longer safe. A lot of mm -hmm. things are happening. That's what God is saying in his word. There's a message for this emergency. There are a lot of things that are happening around us, robberies. Uh, people are killing each other, accidents. Things are not just normal. Economies are going down. Climate change. Yeah. Climate change, actually, yeah. And so the Lord gives a special truth for the people in an emergency. God knew about this time. We actually have it in Matthew chapter 24, where it's predicted that times like this will come. But there's a uh, word for it. Then this is what he says. She says, sorry, who dare refuse to publish it? Mm. My brother, my sister, are you publishing the word? Not just knowing it mm -hmm. or acknowledging that others, the third angel's message. Mm -hmm. Are you publishing it? Mm -hmm. He commands his servants to present the last invitation of mercy to the world. We call ourselves Christians. What does that mean? We call ourselves Adventists. We call ourselves people who love God. Mm -hmm. Are we following this command to preach the word to everyone? To all the nations, they cannot remain, you cannot remain silent except at the peril of their souls. If we are going to remain silent, it's at the peril of our souls. It's, we are going to be destroyed. Christ's ambassadors have nothing to do with consequences. We don't think about what's going to happen to us. We just have to spread the word of God. They must perform their duty and leave the results to God. Mm. Whether people will come, whether we will be persecuted, we just have to leave that to Christ. 
No man can serve God without enlisting against himself the opposition of the hosts of darkness. Mm. The moment we start working for God, Satan and his angels are actually coming against us. Mm -hmm. But there's a more powerful power, which is God's power, which is going to protect us. Mm -hmm. And if he lets anything happen to us, it's not like he's powerless. But he actually trusts us that we are, he has prepared us to fight whatever is going to come to us. Mm -hmm. Evil angels will, will assail him, alarmed that this, his, inf his influence is taking the prey from their hands. Mm -hmm. Evil men rebuked by his example will unite with them in seeking to separate him from God by alluring temptations. When these do not succeed, then a compelling power is employed to force the conscience. So this comes back to forcing people to do things that they don't want or things they don't believe. But when that time comes, when such times comes, when we face such persecution, let us know that the Lord is on our side and he will stand with us. Uh, I will give to Mara. Okay, I will just do my final quotation. I will read it. The message will be carried not so much by argument as by the deep conviction of the Spirit of God. The arguments have been presented. We are just presenting, you know, this is the right Sabbath, this is the word, this is the word. We are doing it now. Actually, it has been done before. The Bible has presented these things. The seed has been sown. And now it will spring up and bear fruit. When the Holy Spirit is going to be poured uh, in, this, in people, it will bear fruit, the seed which has been sown. The publications distributed by missionary workers have exerted their influence, mm -hmm. yet many whose minds were impressed have been prevented from fully comprehending the truth or from yielding obedience. You know, I've actually heard many people saying, Ah, these books have been distributed many times. We didn't see any results. People have preached. Yeah, we have seen a lot of things. Nothing has happened. The spirit of prophets in the Bible has actually told us, yes, there's a time when the seed is going to be scattered and we might not see anything. Mm -hmm. But there is a time that is going to come when preachers are going to go out in numbers and the seed is going to germinate. You don't want to wait for that time. Because when the Holy Spirit is not in you, you will not do nothing and you will lose heaven. So each time God is telling you, prepare your heart. Um, this is the time for us to prepare our fields so that when the rain comes, we actually start to get um, plants growing up. We don't start preparing when the rain is uh, actually, when it's actually raining. We prepare before. That's the same thing that we are doing. Remember, there's a final warning going uh, out, which is the third angel's message. Come out of Babylon, my people. That's the way that's coming from God. Baby, you can conclude. Thank you. Um, I'd like to read this. It's saying that the time of the test makes the issue clear. The work of the Holy Spirit is to convince the world of sin, mm. of righteousness, and of judgment. The world can only be warned by seeing those who believe the truth sanctified through the truth acting upon high and holy principles showing in high elevated sense the line of demarcation between those who keep the commandments of god and those who trample them under their feet the sanctification of the spirit sig signalizes the difference between those who have the seal of god and those who keep the spurious resting when the test comes it will be clearly shown what the mark of the beast is. It is the keeping of Sunday. Those who, after having heard the truth, continue to regard this day as holy, beg the signature of the men of sin who thought to change the times and law. Uh, and laws later, 12, 1900. What this is saying is that when the Holy Spirit wakes upon us, what is going to give power to the message is the Holy Spirit working through people who keep the commandments of God. And so this is going to bring about the, the Holy Spirit alone can convict people. But for people to see the difference, it is, going to be it is going to be through observing those that keep the commandments of God and those that keep the spurious rest day. So it is important for us, my brothers and sisters, as we make 
as we know, right now is not yet the time of the loud cry per se. We are sharing the message that come out of her, my people. But when the latter rain, we do understand that it has begun to fall in some places. When it has fallen on the vast majority of Christendom, at this point, this is when the entire earth will be lighted with the glory of God. And it is important that our lives should be a reflection that we know Jesus and we have spent time with Jesus. This is what will give power to the message. And so the choice is ours at the end of the day. The Lord has made the call to say, come out of Babylon, my people. And once you've come, it is not your duty to just come out and keep silent, but to share the message as well. The quotation that I passed read that there will be men in legislative assemblies with whom the Holy Spirit will work. And they, were it not for them asking unanswerable questions, the world will be in a worse state than it is today. Mm. And I was thinking of, you know, how many laws have been passed which have been opposed, maybe some by governors who are saying, no, this is ridiculous, we can't be doing this. Mm. At this point, this is just a foreshadow of what's coming. At this point, these people will also do the same with regards to the Sabbath issue. But because we have reached the time of the end, the Lord will permit that it is so. Thankfully, the Lord will interpose to save us before we die. But the Lord will permit that these people in the ranks will actually see that, ah, probably there's a problem. The Holy Spirit is no longer here. And they will leave the positions that they had and join hands with the children of God that will have come out of Babylon. I don't know what your position is. I don't know if you're a pastor at your church, if you're an elder, if you're a deaconess, if you're a prophetess or a prophet, whatever you are doing. The Lord is said you have learned of what Babylon is. Babylon is she that represents a false Sabbath. She that has shown her authority by attempting to change the time and the law of God. And we know that it's the purpose. But I'm calling you out today, out to proclaim my message. If you have a high position in government too, the Lord is saying it's okay. It is time for you to come out and worship me on the true day. I don't know if it's your prayer that you would want to join ranks with the children of God. I'd love to pray for you. Let us pray. Our kind and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the final warning that you are giving and you'll give in your love. You do not desire that any of us should be lost. This is why you keep trying and trying. For so many years you've been trying. It's almost two centuries now that you've tried to just warn us that you'll be coming soon. Help us to obey this word. Help us to be faithful and to love you and to come out of Babylon. To allow the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit to work in us. This is our humble prayer in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you guys next, next week, week by the grace of God. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.